to snow-hued earth, Alelu set his course, but secret from the beginning, he chose his destination. Two regions forbidden, Alelu made his way. No one has gone there before. No one at the hammered bracelet a crossing had attempted. A secret from the beginning, Alelu's course has determined. The fate of Nibiru in his hands, it placed by a scheme his kingship to make universal. On Nibiru, exile was certain. There, death itself, he was chancing. In his scheme, risk was the journey. Eternal glory of success was the reward. Riding like an eagle, Alelu the heavens scanned. Below Nibiru was a ball in a voidness hanging. Alluring was its figure. Its radiance emblazoned the surrounding heavens. Its measure was enormous. Its belching fire blazed forth. Its life-sustaining envelope, its hue a redness, was like a sea churning. In its midst, the breach was distinct, like a darkened wound. He looked down again. The wide breach turned into a small tub. He looked again. Nibiru's great ball turned into a small fruit. The next time he looked, in the wide dark sea, Nibiru disappeared. Remorse the heart of Alelu grasped. Fear held him in his hands. Decision to hesitation turned. To halt in his tracks, Alelu considered. Then from audacity to decision, he returned. A hundred leagues, a thousand leagues, the chariot was coursing. Ten thousand leagues, the chariot was journeying. In the wide heavens, darkness was the darkest. In the far away, distant stars, their eyes were blinking. More leagues, Alelu traveled. Then a sight of great joy met his gaze. In the expanse of the heavens, the celestial's emissary was greeting him. Little Gaga, the one who shows the way, by its circuit, Alelu was greeting, to him a welcome extending. With a leaning gait, before and after the celestial Antu, it was destined to travel, to face forward, to face backwards. With two facings, it was endowed. Its appearance as first to greet Alelu, as a good omen, he at once considered. By the celestial gods, he is welcome, so was his understanding. In his chariot, Alelu followed Gaga's path. To the second god of the heavens it was directing. Soon celestial Antu, its name King Enshar, was given. In the deep's darkness was looming. Blue as pure water was her hue. Of the upper waters she was the commencement. Alelu by the sight's beauty was enchanted. To course at a distance, he continued. In the far beyond, Antu's spouse began to shimmer. By size, Antu's the equal. As his spouse's double, by a greenish blueness, was undistinguished. A dazzling host encircled on its side. With firm grounds, they were provided. The two celestials, Alelu, bade a fond farewell, the path of Gaga still discerning. The way it was showing to its olden master, of whom it was once the counselor, to Anshir, the foremost prince of the heavens, the course was a turning. By the speeding chariot, Alelu, the ensnaring pole of Anshir, could tell. With bright rings of dazzling colors, the chariot was enchanting. That which shows the way, with might he diverted. A sight most awesome then to him appeared. In the faraway heavens, the family's bright star, he discerned. A sight most frightening, the revelation followed. A giant monster, in its destiny moving. Upon the sun a darkening cast. Kishar, its creator, swallowed. Frightening was the occurrence. An evil omen, Alelu indeed thought. The giant Kishar, foremost of the firm planets. Its size was overwhelming. Swirling storms obscured its face. Colored spots, they moved about. A host beyond county, some quickly, some slowly. The celestial god encircled. Troublesome were their ways. Back and forth they were surging. Kishar itself a spell was casting. Divine lightnings it was thrusting. As Alelu looked on, his course became upset. His direction was distracted. His doings became confused. Then the deepness, darkening, began to depart. Kishar, on his destiny, continued to circuit. Slowly moving, its veil from the shining sun it lifted. The one from the beginning finally came into view. Joy in Alelu's heart was not long-lasting. Beyond the fifth planet, the utmost danger was lurking, so indeed he knew. The hammered bracelet ahead was raining. To demolish it was awaiting. Of rocks and boulders was it together hammered. Like orphans with no mothers, they bound together. Surging back and forth, a bygone destiny they followed. Their doings were loathsome. Troubling were their ways. Nibiru's probing chariots, like praying lions, they devoured. The precious gold needed for surviving, they refused to dislodge. The chariot of Alelu, toward the hammer bracelet, was headlong moving. The ferocious boulders, in close combat to boldly face, Alelu, the firestones in his chariot, more strongly stirred up. That which shows the way, with steady hands, he directed. The ominous boulders, against the chariots, charged forward, like an enemy in battle attacking. Toward them, Alelu, a, a death-dealing missile from the chariot let loose. Then another, then another, against the enemy. The terror weapon he thrust, as frightened warriors, the boulders, turned back. A path for Alelu granting, like by a spell the hammered bracelet, a doorway the king opened. 
In the dark deepness, Alelu, the heavens could clearly see. By the bracelet's ferocity, he was not defeated. His mission was not ended. In the distance, the sun's fiery ball, its brilliance was sending forth, welcoming rays to Alelu it was emitting. Before it, a red-brown planet on its circuit was coursing. The sixth in the count of the celestial gods it was. Alelu could but glimpse it. On his destined course from Alelu's path, it was quickly moving. Then snow-hued earth appeared the seven in the celestial count. Toward the planet, Alelu set his course, to a destination most inviting. Smaller than Nibiru was its alluring ball. Weaker than Nibiru's was its attracting net. Its atmosphere thinner than Nibiru's was. Clouds were within it swirling. Below, the earth to three regions was divided, snow white at the top and on the bottom, blue and brown in between. Deftly, Alelu spread the chariot's arresting wings around the earth's ball to circle. In the middle region, dry lands and watery oceans he could discern. The beam that penetrates downwards, he directed. Earth's innards to detect. I have attained it, statically he shouted. Gold, much gold, the beam is indicated. It was beneath the dark-hued region, in the waters too. With a pounding heart, Alelu, a decision was contemplating. Shall he on the dry land his chariot bring down, perchance to crash and die? Shall he to the waters his course direct, perchance to oblivion sink? Which way shall he survive? Will he the treasured gold discover? In the eagle's seat, Alelu was not stirring. To fate's hands, the chariot he entrusted. Fully caught in earth's attracting net, the chariot was moving faster. Its spread wings became a glow. The earth's atmosphere was like an oven. Then the chariot shook, emitting a mortifying thunder. With abruptness, the chariot crashed. With a suddenness, altogether stopping. Senseless from the shaking, stunned by the crash. Alelu was not moving. Then he opened his eyes, and he knew he was among the living. At the planet of gold, he victoriously arrived. Now this is the account of Earth and its gold.